All right. So I am live right now on uh, on live stream, and I'm and I'm also live on Facebook. Um, if you're on, if you're seeing this on Facebook, check the link and go to my live stream. Um, I'm gonna do a demo of some of the stuff that I do here uh, for Andop Consulting. Um, I've got my my live stream camera set up, and I've got uh, my desktop plugged in, so I'm hoping to be able to show you some screens, um, some of the steps of how to how to do some stuff in Oracle. Uh, this topic is for a customer. Um, Worthing Company that I'm working at here in Pennsylvania, and this video is specifically for uh, Jim and Maria. Um, so I'm going to edit this and, and uh, give it to them so they can uh, see how to, um, you know, do do some of these functions. Uh, what I'm going to do is set up some validation on some fields. Um, they're having a problem where um, information is coming in from their custom time system called ePay, and um, project you know somebody puts their time in they put a project in they put a task in um, but sometimes that data doesn't come out correctly and uh, over correctly and sometimes when one of the payroll admins um, try to update the records or they put something in manually um, they may miskey the the project or the task or what's called a class code so this is a construction company and they're doing a thing called prevailing wage um, which is you know pretty important to construction companies uh, around the country. Um, all the rules are different in every state, but you got to you got to tag a job. So if you work eight hours at a certain job site, you got to put a class code on it, and you get paid differently. Um, so this this is a big deal to people who are working uh, these construction jobs because um, it, it can mean you know hundreds of dollars of difference in their pay. So if this isn't right, then um, somebody's in trouble, and it usually comes down to me. Um, so I'm going to show you real quick here, um, as fast as I can, so I don't drag on too much. I'm going to show you um, how to set up these input validations um, through a fast formula. So we're working with the Oracle Payroll, and I'm switching over to my screen here. So the first thing I did um, is I created a, a custom PL SQL program. Now, this isn't required, but for this for this uh, for this problem, it's easier to do a PL SQL program. All right, let's try to find it here. I should have this all set up. I will edit this out. All right, so I, I carry around this this uh, this program called Pay FF Functions Package. Um, so this is this is PL SQL in Oracle. Uh, so this is you know real coding, I guess, um, as much as I can do. And I created a couple uh, little functions. You know, one is called validate project. So it's going to take so when somebody enters a project, it's going to take uh, you know the value they entered. It's going to compare it against the database to see what uh, if that value is any good for that specific day. Uh, so two things that come in is the session date, you know, what date are you, are you trying to do this? And the other thing that comes in is the entry value, what what value are you putting in? And i got a little SQL script that goes out and says, you know, look at the projects table. If this is a, a valid project, you know, um, then it's a success. If it's not, then you return an error. And I have another one for the same thing to validate the task. The task goes over, uh, it's looking at Oracle time and labor, uh, which we're not using here, but... Um, which would be nice, but um, we're using some of the tables to, to validate the information. Um, what else we got here? And I've got another one. So if you're on live, if you're on Facebook Live, you know, kick over to to live stream. Check the check the, the link. You can see my screen. Uh, and I have one to validate the class code, which is you know how the person's going to get paid. Um, so I have you know three. PL SQL functions. So the great thing about Oracle Payroll in a thing called Fast Formula is it, it's its own proprietary language, but if you have something that it doesn't do, you know, a special calculation, you can kick out to Oracle PL SQL um, and you can program a rule to do anything you want to do. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty pretty hot stuff. And that's in the Oracle eBusiness Suite. That's not so 
not so much in um, any of the cloud products, but on eBusiness Suite you can do this. So that that is the the function. You know, I created those, compiled them. They're in the database. Uh, I'm going to flip over to another screen. So this screen that you see in now is uh, it, you know it's what's called the define a function screen. So when I create a PL SQL program in the database in PL SQL in the schema, um, it's great. It sits there, but in, in order for for fast for me to see it. I have to register it in, in the application, you know. So I just go into the you know HR manager um, and you go to total compensation, and I have a document with all, with all the all the uh, navigation. Um, but I give it a name. This is called validate project. This is the data type is text because that's what we're working with is text. It's an external function. Um, you know, I, I like to give it a good description. This it says this function checks the input value entered against the PA project all table. And then this value right here is the important, the important guy right here. This is my object in the database. XXWC pay FF functions is the package header, and the package, uh, the function in there is um, validate underscore project. Um, now you notice there were two input values that were in that in that function, so I had to feed those from someplace. And to set those up, there's two places in, in Fast Form the Functions where you can do that. The first one is Context Usages. Now, I'm not using any Context Usages, um, but depending on what kind of formula you're using, you can automatically pass in things like, you know, what's your assignment ID, what's the date earned, um, what's your jurisdiction code, stuff like that can, can automatically be passed to the, you know, the PLSQL function. I don't care about any of that stuff on this, on this example. I'm just setting up some, you know, my own parameters, and I'm bringing in session date and entry values. Now, these values match what's in my PL SQL program just by coincidence. Uh, what's really important here is the number. Uh, whatever you call this parameter, it's going to go get stuck into the first parameter in the PL SQL package. Whatever you call the second parameter, it's going to get stuck in the second parameter of what you call the PL SQL package. Um, and like I said, if you're if you're live on Facebook, um, check out check out my my link. Um, and so the first one's date, next one's text. That's it. And I save that, and that that's a function. And I created three of these guys: uh, validate project, validate task, uh, and validate class code. So there you see them. So now that I have those, I can actually use them in a formula. And I'm going to switch over to another screen. This is all within Oracle HR. And uh, under the fast formula, write formula. And these are date tracks. That's a, that's a whole other topic. Um, let's see. I do a query here. Okay. So I know this starts with WC and it has project in it. So I'm going to just do a query. And what I'm using my hotkeys, which is um, F11, I enter my query, wildcard is present, and then control F11. So I have a, uh, now I have a formula out here called WC validate project. Let's look what that looks like. So a validation formula for uh, inputs um, has some specific things that it needs to have. You can look this up on the Oracle support site. Um, I'll, in the comments, I'll try to put the, the, the note and the link to that. Um, but you have to have some defaults. Um, and again, if you're on Facebook, um, make sure you check the link. You can see my screen. Um, so you have to have some defaults. Entry value is, is the first one. And session date, because I'm using those parameters. And in this formula status, you, know, you have to have one input at least. The input is the entry value. So that's, a, that's the, whatever's being entered on the time card, imported or entered by the, by the user. Um, and then you start writing your formula. And my formula is very simple. Since I'm doing all the calculation in PL SQL, I just say set my formula status equal to XX validate project, which calls the PL SQL program that I'm that I wrote. It's going to feed the session date. You know, what data you are you working on? 
and what's the entry value that you're entering it's going to feed those two things into this this program and that program is going to return either an e or an s and that's important to remember for for um, validation formulas that's the only thing that can come back on the on the status it can be an e or it can be an s if you send anything else back it's gonna it's gonna blow up um, so If the formula comes back as, as an S, I'm not going to do any kind of message. Um, but if it comes back as an E, I'm going to also set this thing called formula message. So it lets you set whatever message you want to set. Um, and it's, mine's pretty simple, invalid project code, please try again. Um, when it goes through that formula, it's going to return the formula status in the E or an S, and it's going to return the formula message, which is either going to be this message or nothing. Um, so if it's an S, it's just going to kick through and, and, and be great. Um, so that's the fast formula. The next thing that I have to do is I have to go attach this formula to the input value. And you do that in the element. So element description. I'm not going to date track because this is going to be a correction. Uh, let me let me grab real quick my document. So I have this all all. Um, I should have opened this before, but I, I rebooted, and so I lost it. Um, so I have a, a little Word document, and this is you know very simple migration document. Uh, to you know, kind of script out what, what are we doing with this change. Um, it's an issue, I have a description in there, some of the key players, you know, I compile the, the, the programs. This walks through where I set up the functions. So this is step by step how to how to do it. Um, and then I get down into the formulas, which we, we covered that, and then at the end. So I need to go attach these formulas to these these inputs that are coming in from the users. And I've already done a couple of them. I'm going to do, um, I don't know, let's try shift pay. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to do an F11. F11. I'm going to paste that in there. I'm going to do a control F11. Those are the hotkeys. You could use the menu to do this also. Um, so there's my shift pay element. So behind the scenes, it's got a funky name, EWC shift pay. What gets reported on, on, on the statement of earnings for the employees, what employees see, it just says shift pay. <clears throat> and I'm going to go down to the input values. There's lots of stuff. These are the standard input values from Oracle. Um, I'm going to scroll down here and I get into the into our custom input values. So for this setup, it's kind of an old, old way of doing business because they're using ePay um, and, and they're putting, they're bringing the project number, the task number um, into, into, the, uh, into the actual element for payroll. And I'm going to scroll over on the project number. too far. Let me just tab. So you can set defaults. One way you can do validation is you can do a lookup. So you can create a lookup value, just a static list of values. Um, we didn't do that here. You can use a value set, um, which is, you know, if you're familiar with flex fields, you know how to do value sets. Or you can do a formula. So where I created a formula. I created a bunch of formulas. Well, I created three of them. Um, these other formulas, jurisdiction, pay value, and PQP, those are seeded by Oracle. Oracle created those for you for, for different reasons. But I'm on the project field, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check project. Oops. And then I say, uh, I'll bring that message back up.
Well, the message won't come back up, but it said this field's required. Of course, it's a yellow field, so it's required. This is going to be a correction. And I'll go down to the task number. He wants me to save first, so I'm going to save it. And I'll go down to the task number. And I have a formula for that. Task. So if it, if it doesn't pass, I want to I want to throw an error and then and not let the person um, uh, save. So that's it. Um, that is how you enter. And you notice this um, this one does not have the class code because it's shift pay. Shift pay doesn't get a special rate. I don't believe. Um, I'll have to check that out. So that's it. Um, pretty straightforward how you add some input validation to an Oracle uh, payroll element. Um, like I said, if you're on, on Facebook watching this, look, check out my live stream. I'll edit this and, and uh, put it out on YouTube, save it. Um, that's all I have for tonight. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, wanna have a couple more hours of work to do and get some sleep tonight and uh, hit it again tomorrow. So have a great day and uh, have a great night. And I will, I will see you soon.